The Intel Alchemist line of cards has been pretty volatile over the past year to say the least. Ranging from not so game breaking graphical glitches to blue screens on game load, there have been a lot of issues that have come and gone with the A770 and subsequent A750. But I wanted to take another look at the A770 16GB, specifically the Sparkle Titan OC edition, to discuss whether or not this card is worth a place in your consciousness in 2024. Before we get into this video, I'd like to say not to forget to hit the like button and subscribe, so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. Additionally, don't forget to leave a comment, especially if there's something I missed. I can't cover every aspect of the A770 over the course of a single video, but I figured discussing the different pros and cons of the Alchemist cards, and the A770 in particular, would be a good way to just present the information so you can make a more informed decision. Without any further ado, let's dive into the A770 and see if this 16GB card is worth checking out. When it comes to the overall placement of this card in the relative power ladder, different games and benchmarks ultimately perform differently on this architecture and scale at different rates. As such, the card can pretty comfortably match something like a 3060 Ti from Nvidia or a 6700 XT from AMD in a handful of modern games when utilizing the included upscaling features. But in other games, it may perform around an RTX 3050 or GTX 1080. This wide variance in performance is really hard to predict, and the only way to figure out how it will perform on a particular hardware combination is to just test it on said hardware. That's really difficult to do when there are literally billions of possible hardware configurations, but by and large the identifiable trend line seems to indicate that this card performs significantly better on modern graphics APIs such as DirectX 12 or Vulkan, and struggles to keep up a bit more in OpenGL and older DirectX versions. DirectX 12 based games such as Call of Duty Warzone, Fortnite, Battlefield, and Cyberpunk perform well once you've adjusted the settings appropriately. But this story isn't really the case for DirectX 11 games such as Apex Legends or Counter Strike 2. They run fine for the most part, but there are times where performance can be head scratchingly low even at competitive settings. This isn't saying that performance in these games are poor, but when compared to the price competitors from the red and green teams, the A770 just falls behind at lower resolutions, which is an area that you'd expect a card of this spec class to dominate in. If you're seriously considering an A770, I'd only really do so if you're looking to target 1440p gameplay. If you want to rock 1080p, then the slightly more expensive and anemically equipped RTX 4060 will kick the crap out of the A770 in a raw frames per dollar comparison. However, turn the resolution up to 1440p and 4K, and now the comparison is in favor of the A770. Here are some comparisons of the frame per dollar metric, which is popularly used by channels such as Gamers Nexus and Hardware Unboxed to try and put a scalar value on a card that can then be compared to find a theoretical best value card. Applying the simple calculation to the averages achieved during benchmark rounds, and you can get these graphs that I'm showing on screen. I decided to compare this card to the 4060 because it's the closest card in the 40 series that's worth buying. And all comparisons will be done without DLSS, frame generation, or ZSS enabled. Keep in mind that this was done with the values that I paid for these cards, and the numbers will probably change from region to region. A price of $300 was assumed for the RTX 4060 and $290 for the RK770. Starting off strong with the A770, Games like Apex Legends, Cyberpunk, and Red Dead Redemption 2 really let the card flex its muscles. Red Dead 2 was easily the most impressive, with the A770 crushing the 4060 at all resolutions in the value metric. Cyberpunk was also a very strong showing for the A770, with a large lead developing at 1440p and 4K, but the 4060 closing in significantly once the resolution was lowered to 1080p. Apex had a similar showing to Cyberpunk, However, the lead shown by the A770 was much less pronounced at 1440p. Counter-Strike 2, even though I just said it performed kind of oddly for the tier of card that this is, actually came in similarly to the 4060 in the value department at 1440p and 4k, but fell behind more noticeably at 1080p. Other titles such as Fortnite, Modern Warfare 3, and Warzone 2, along with Overwatch, all leaned in favor of the 4060 slightly at 1440p, more dramatically so at 1080p, and actually swung in favor of the A770 when the resolution jumped up to 4K. 
This variance in overall performance should show that things are just inconsistent between different pieces of hardware. Where with other brands, I'd be comfortable making a general recommendation that holds true in the majority of scenarios, the A770 is just too inconsistent for me to be comfortable doing the same thing. Just from the graphs I previously showed, yeah sure, I mean the most common trend by far showed the A770 overall outperforming the 4060 in terms of value at 1440p and 4k, but falling behind to 1080p. Yet, there are still not an insignificant number of games where this is either reversed, or the 4060 just dominates the A770 like in Overwatch 2. Overall though, is the A770 worth being interested in, and ultimately checking out or considering to use as your main graphics card? Well, if you're looking to get into PC gaming more casually, in the sense that you just want to set and forget, then the A770 might not be the best option at this point in time, or really at any point in time in the future. But if you're more familiar with how computers operate, in the sense that you're comfortable working on your PC like some people are comfortable working on their own car, then the A770, or really any Alchemist card, is interesting to consider if you're willing to take your time and really get to know how this card handles the games that you play. But by and large, this card performs more strongly in games at 1440p and above, which is pretty hard to complain about. Keep in mind that this value calculation can also change more dramatically in favor of the A770 if you pay a lower price, or 4060s are more expensive in your region. Conversely, the opposite can be true, and this card may be less value-oriented based on the price that it's available for. If you're looking for more value in the Alchemist lineup, then surprisingly the A750 actually beats out the A770 in most titles in the raw frames per dollar calculation. It even beats the 4060 a lot of the times as well. But there are still games where the 4060 just beats the A750 in this metric, and these are what most would consider to be eSport or competitive multiplayer titles where every frame counts. I think that if you're looking at an Alchemist card, or the A770 in particular, it's an interesting piece of hardware that gives you a lot of beefy under the hood components compared to similarly priced cards from AMD and Nvidia. But just because the specs are beefy doesn't mean that the card is performance dominant. Thankfully, Intel have progressively adjusted the price of this card to reflect its standing in the current market meaning you aren't getting a bad deal if you pick one up. But if you're looking to buy this card and get class-leading performance with the industry's leading software, then your money is better spent elsewhere. The software support, when it is there, works incredibly well and accelerates workloads efficiently and performantly. When I say software support, I'm primarily talking about driver support in games and also productivity applications. I don't run into applications that just won't boot with an art card on my system anymore, thankfully, but non-traditional use cases such as VR and emulation have long lists of issues and bug reports that are actively being worked on, but may impede your potential use case in the here and now. Like I said before, this really is case dependent and is something you'll just have to research on your own to find whether or not the card can accommodate what you want to do with it. Thankfully, there are tons of benchmarking sites and resources available to help you collect information and determine whether or not it suits your needs. So, thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. Let me know what you think about the A770. Does it meet your performance expectations, or would you rather get something more powerful for a similar price? Also, let me know if you want to see a wider comparison of GPUs included in the frames per dollar comparison charts. That's all I really have to say on the matter, so thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.